we got a bird that came in here. Couldn't figure out how to get out. And he's pooping everywhere because we have the eaves open. He can just come in and get out of the weather and I think he's over there right now flying around. Hey bird. Where'd you go? Oh, there he is over there. How do you get a bird out of a basement? Welcome back to the ICF Mountain House Build. It is February 2021 already. I can't believe where the time has gone. Uh, this is also season six for our YouTube channel. I can't believe we've been doing videos for six years. It seems like we've been trying to build this house for six years, even though it's been a little over a year. But yeah, so it's uh, been about 30 days since we did a video because we've been waiting on the weather to improve so we could pour our concrete porch outside, but that has not been the case. We haven't had a day above freezing in like six weeks at night, and I need at least three solid days of above freezing temperatures to pour concrete. So this video is about insulation because I decided we're gonna move inside, we can't stop working. I'm uh, gonna prep for the insulation. We gotta finish spray foaming around these windows here. I need to block in the eaves, finish doing that. And uh, hopefully we'll be ready to spray foam tomorrow. Um, got the guy bringing the truck today. <clears throat> it's like 55 gallon barrels uh, that need to be heated and then mixed. And in this weather, well, hopefully we can do it tomorrow. Also, I wanna thank Ariat for sponsoring us once again this year in 2021. They're a great partner. They make amazing work clothes and work boots. They're our favorite brand. Uh, this is a flame resistant coat that is nice and heavy duty. You can weld in it because it's flame resistant. They make all kinds of stuff like this. If you haven't checked them out, we'll have links in the description of all our videos this year for all of our favorite things from them. And you can get 10% off your first order. Let's get to work. This is the only part of the house that is stick built. It is a two by six stud wall. And then this is uh, ICF, obviously. And so we need to insulate this wall and the roof. We're gonna spray foam directly to the underside of the roof deck. Um, and then spray foam inside these two by six walls. And that will create completely a conditioned space, no attic. Um, all of our HVAC stuff for the upstairs units are in the attic. That'll be condition space, everything will be good. But before I do that, I have to block off the eaves. A uh, couple reasons. One, to keep birds from going in there and pooping all over the floor, which they have been doing. And two, to give us a backer so that when we spray foam it, it doesn't just squirt out the side. So I'm gonna use rigid foam insulation. And the other thing that does is it helps to insulate that thermal break at the top plate of this wall here. So we'll put, uh, probably three inches of foam there which will give us like an r15 on the outside and then we'll have that that top plate will be our only thermal break but we'll be fine because we're gonna spray foam the crap out of it but that's what i'm gonna do right now let's get up on the ladder and start putting spray foam in there i mean uh rigid foam in there so if you recall or you saw the video where we built this well house and insulated it uh, we used that rigid foam board that you get from the big box store to completely line the inside of that well house and it has worked very well. So I've got some of it left over. Just get it at the big box store. One inch of this stuff is a R5 if you're lucky. Two inches is R10. So I'm gonna use this up and then the spray foam will be on the inside. So that should do pretty good for uh, insulating that top of that wall there all around the perimeter. Got all my cat six runs done. 
So let me explain this a little bit better if I can about what I'm doing with this rigid foam board outside and why I'm doing that. So when we spray foam this, we're gonna spray foam these wall cavities, two by six walls. But when we get up to here, we got this double top plate. And then we got this open eave area. We could just block that off and spray foam it, but then you got this double top plate, which is a thermal barrier or a thermal bridge. So you don't really have any insulation there between that space and that space. So that's why we're foaming on the outside with a couple layers of foam and we'll plug that hole. So you have continuous insulation here, even though you have this, it'll be insulated on the outside. This will be insulated on the outside. And your, your insulation will actually overhang the, the uh, outside of the wall by like three inches. So then everything will be one nice thermal envelope. I can already tell a big difference from just blocking what I've done. It's pretty windy out. It's nice in here. Can't believe how much wind was actually getting in here just in those little areas. This is gonna be really nice. are working inside when it's windy out. fingers up into these roofing nails that are sticking through the deck because that hurts. vacuuming the entire house, including all the stud, stud bays, around all the windows, every little nook and cranny, probably sucked up seven pounds of dead bugs. I'm not usually freaked out about bugs. That's just gross. But it's clean, it's ready to go. Hopefully we can spray foam next week. Uh, next I'm gonna start measuring and figuring out what to do for soffit and fascia. If we can get that figured out and done, uh, and then we'll be ready to do the siding when that time comes. So I'm just working on a bunch of little different things as I can while we're waiting for the temperatures to come up so we can pour concrete, as I've said. Back to work.
spray foam around the windows is finally done. So all the windows and doors are finished and we're ready to do actual spray foam insulation in the walls and roof. stick to the studs. It doesn't stick as good if the wood is cold. So we're at 50. Was well, like 30. Cool. Yeah, it is. I matched up, you know, right. A to B. One's like a catalyst, works like a fusion. Uh, hence the name fusion reactor is the system that we have. It's 135 degrees, so it keeps that temperature a little bit, but you see where that cold spray as opposed to this is more consistent foam. Gotcha. You know, uh, more tight cell, loosely dense cell, I mean, uh, uh, uncoiled cell. And it forms within, you saw it, that's, that's cured. You know what I mean? That's quick. Yeah, yeah. You know, we can shave that right behind it. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Just basically testing to see if the temperature's good, if it's expanding right, chemical reactions working the way it's supposed to. Looks good.
productive day. Got the knee walls done, got the roof done, the hard part for sure. So tomorrow should be cakewalk, hopefully. Gable's good. Now tomorrow we'll do this part. Day two of spray foaming. We should be able to finish today. We got all the hard stuff done yesterday. This really high uh, cathedral ceiling was done. Waiting on the guys to show up. It's a little bit cold, so I'm gonna fire up this little heater, see if we can get the temps up here. You have to have it kind of warm so that the uh, spray foam mixes and does its chemical reaction thing. You can't do it in super freezing temperatures. It just doesn't work real well. So I'm gonna get the heater going, get some of the scaffold set up, clean up some of this mess, just kind of get ready. So when they get here, we can probably knock this out in about hour and a half and then the rest is clean up it makes a huge mess if you do this make sure you put down plastic on the floor cover all your windows with plastic before you start because it just it comes out of the gun as a liquid and it splashes everywhere it takes it like a second for it to just start expanding into foam so it's that point before it starts expanding that it just is a mess overall so far i'm real happy there are a couple spots that are a little uh, thin that we're going to have to fill in. But these guys fill the whole cavity in the walls, shave it, which is good. Um, I had contacted another company that gave me a quote for about half as much foam. They were not interested in shaving the foam. So they were only going to put like three inches in the walls and five inches in the roof, which I don't even think that's code. So be careful what you're at least understand what you're trying to get and what you're looking for when you get into spray foam. What are the requirements code-wise? Uh, how much R value is that particular formulation for you? Uh, and just make sure you're getting what you're paying for. Other than that, I mean, one of the challenges we had was getting the wires pulled out because when I wired these, this uh, ceiling for the, the, the lights, you know, I ran it in a loop and then just left a bunch of wire hanging because we're gonna cut it, hook up the wire and move to the next. So we had to squish the wire together, kind of pull it out and center it in the stud bay, hold it there, shoot the foam, let the foam grow and kind of lock it in place and then move on. So trying to get those all kind of lined up in, a same, in the same line was a little bit challenging, but we got it. and. Uh, I think we'll be in good shape when we go to put the uh, ceiling on and install the lights. But other than that, I'm gonna get ready, get prepped, and uh, we're gonna finish the spray foam.
All right, don't get sick from the camera, but there's spray foam everywhere. In the attic, he really made it thick up there. These guys did a really good job. I'm really happy with their work. They filled all the cavities where they needed to be filled, shaved it, and it made a huge mess. And they cleaned up pretty well. Got all the big chunks. That was completely covered. And uh, now I gotta spend a couple days really detail cleaning this because there's a, still a lot left on the floor and all over, so I'm going to get to that. Okay, spray foam is finally done. That was a three day job. We thought it was gonna be a two day job, but you know, these high ceilings take a little extra time to, you know, you got some scaffolding, you got what kind of issues you gotta handle and you wanna take your time and not make a mistake and hurt yourself. So they did it. Um, they got all the walls filled and shaved. They did not have to fill the roof for code, but they just about filled it and definitely in the attic they overfilled it so now i got a nice conditioned area up there for the air handler it's airtight it is almost soundproof got here this morning about nine and it was 35 degrees in here and uh so i lit up the kerosene heater and let that run for an hour and got it up to about 65 degrees shut it off it's now 3 30 in the afternoon it's still 60 or 65 degrees in here i'm pretty Pretty happy, so it works. Spray foam is definitely the way to go if you can do it, if it makes sense for you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up, and try to get this video uploaded, it's been a while. I wanna thank Ariat once again for sponsoring today's episode. I wanna thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video.